Welcome to another Serial Killer Saturday. This time, we are going to explore this lovely lady here, Jane Toppin. Jane, who had an obviously traumatic childhood and a family history of mental illness, was given the ultimate combination for becoming a serial killer. Even in the best of circumstances, could Jane have had much hope? If you follow the link to Murderpedia in the description box below, you will find a PDF file on that page, and it offers a year-by-year -year breakdown of Jane's life. Jane Toppin Classification Serial Killer Characteristics Poisoner Her ambition was and this is a quote, to have killed more people, helpless people, than any other man or woman who ever lived. Number of victims, 31 and more. Date of murders, 1887 through 1901. Date of arrest, October 29th, 1901. Victim Profile Hospital patients and relatives Method of murder Poisoning Morphine and atropine Location Middlesex County, Suffolk County, Massachusetts, United States Status Found not guilty by reason of insanity on June 23, 1902, and committed for life in the Taunton Insane Hospital, where she died on August 17, 1938. Jane Toppin, born Honora Kelly, was a 26-year-old nurse from Boston, Massachusetts, and an American serial killer. She confessed to 31 murders in 1901. Though scanned records survive of Toppin's early years, it is known that her parents were Irish immigrants and her mother, Bridget Kelly, died of tuberculosis when she was very young. Her father, Peter Kelly, was known as an alcoholic and eccentric nicknamed by those who knew him as Kelly the Crack, crack as in crackpot. In later years, Kelly would become the source of many local rumors concerning his supposed insanity, the most popular of which being that his madness finally drove him to sew his own eyelids closed while working as a tailor. The story's authenticity is dubious, but it accurately reflects the prevailing opinion of Peter Kelly as an extremely unbalanced person. In 1863, only a few years after his wife's death, Kelly brought his two youngest children, eight-year-old Delia Josephine and six-year-old Honora to the Boston Female Asylum, an orphanage for indigent female children founded in 1799 by Mrs. Hannah Stillman. Kelly, Kelly, surrendered the two young girls, never to see them again. Documents from the asylum note that the two girls were rescued from a very miserable home. No records of Delia and Honora's experiences during their time in the asylum exist, but in less than two years, in November 1864, Honora Kelly was placed as an indentured servant in the home of Mrs. Ann C. Toppin of Lowell, Massachusetts. Though never formally adopted by the Toppins, Honora took on the surname of her benefactors, 
and eventually became known as Jane Toppin. Delia remained in the institution until 1868, when she was placed as a servant in Athol, New York at the age of 12. Later, she turned to prostitution and eventually died a destitute alcoholic in squalid conditions. Jane excelled in school and seemed completely normal prior to being jilted by her fiancé years later. After that, she attempted suicide and suffered through a period of odd behavior that included efforts to predict the future through analysis of dreams. Another sister, Ellen, joined her father in the lunatic asylum after suffering a mental breakdown in her 20s. Briefly stabilizing during 1880, Jane signed on as a student nurse at a hospital in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Once again, she excelled in her classwork. But supervisors and colleagues were disturbed with her obsession with autopsies. Dismissed after two patients died mysteriously in her care, she left the hospital without her certificate forging the paperwork necessary to find work as a private nurse. Over the next two decades, she was hired by dozens of New England families, caring for the ill and elderly in several states. But few of Toppin's patients managed to survive her special treatment. In 1885, Toppin began training to be a nurse at Cambridge Hospital. During her residency, she used her patients as guinea pigs in experiments with morphine and atropine. She would alter their prescribed dosages to see what it did to their nervous systems. However, she would spend a lot of time alone with those patients, making up fake charts and medicating them to drift in and out of consciousness, and even get into bed with them. It is not known whether any sexual activity went on when her victims were in this state, but when Jane Toppin was asked after her arrest, she answered that she derived a sexual thrill from patients being near death coming back to life, and then dying again. Toppin would administer a drug mixture to these patients she chose as her victims, lie in bed with them, and hold them close to her as they died. This is quite rare for female serial killers, who usually murder for material gain and not sexual satisfaction. She was recommended for the prestigious Massachusetts General Hospital in 1889. There she claimed several more victims before being fired the following year. She briefly returned to Cambridge, but was soon dismissed for prescribing opiates recklessly. She then began a career as a private nurse, which flourished despite complaints of petty theft. She began her poisoning spree in earnest in 1895 by killing her landlords. In 1899, she killed her foster sister Elizabeth with a dose of strychnine. On July 4th, 1901, an old friend, Maddie Davis, died under Jane's care at Cambridge, and Toppin accompanied the body home to Cottamit, Massachusetts, for a burial. She was then retained as the family nurse by patriarch Alden Davis. Jane finished off his married daughter, Annie Gordon, on July 29th. The old man's death a few days later. 
it was blamed on a stroke and his surviving daughter Mary Gibbs was pronounced dead on August 19th Mary's husband demanded an autopsy Mary's husband demanded an autopsy and lethal doses of morphine were found in the three latest victims but Jane was not finished yet she moved back to her hometown and began courting her late foster sister's husband killing his sister and poisoning him so she could prove herself by nursing him back to health she even poisoned herself to evoke his sympathy the ruse did not work however and he cast her out of his house the surviving members of the Davis family ordered a toxicology exam on Alden Davis's youngest daughter the report found that she had been poisoned and local authorities put a police detail on Toppin on October 26th 1901 she was arrested for murder by 1902 she had confessed to 31 murders in custody Toppin confessed to 31 murders naming her victims but students believe her final tally falls somewhere between 70 and 100 victims no accurate list of her hospital victims was ever compiled and various New England families avoided the scandal by refusing official requests for exhumations and autopsies at trial Jane's lawyer grudgingly conceded 11 murders staking his hopes on a plea of insanity Toppin cinched the case with her own testimony telling the court that is my ambition to have killed more people more helpless people than any man or woman who has ever lived on June 23rd in the Barnstable County Courthouse she was found not guilty by reason of insanity and committed for life in the Taunton Insane Hospital soon after the trial one of William Randolph Hearst's newspapers the New York Journal printed what was purported to be Toppin's confession to her lawyer that she had killed more than 31 people and that she wanted the jury to find her insane so she could eventually have a chance at being released whether or not that was truly Toppin's intention is unknown she remained at Taunton for the rest of her life where she died in August in 1838 at age 84 she was remembered by her keepers as a quiet old lady but older attendants remembered her smile as she beckoned them into a room go get some morphine dearie she would say and we'll go out in the ward you and I will have a lot of fun seeing them die Toppin is widely believed to have been the inspiration for the incomparable Bessie Denker a character in William March's novel the bad seed which Maxwell Anderson turned into a successful play and film like Toppin Denker was a serial poisoner who began killing at a young age in the independent film American Nightmare written and directed by John Keyes Debbie Rochon portrays a serial killer named Jane Toppin who manages to kill numerous characters throughout the course of the film by various means the character is also employed as a nurse Toppin was the subject of one of six monologues in the play murderous by Anne Bertram she was portrayed by Laura Weber's in the segment the truth about miss 
Toppen. The play opened to favorable reviews. A critic, William Randall Beard, called the Toppen segment a chilling portrait of a sociopath nurse. If you have any suggestions for a serial killer you would like to see profiled here, send me a message on any of the social media platforms I have in the description box, or you can leave a comment here. See you next time. Yeah.